when a when a vocal is recorded poorly, there's a lot of stuff you got to do. There's a lot of carving you need to do to to you know pull out any kind of weird room anomalies, chesty things, artifacts of poor mic placement or poor mic choice. Um, and in this case, you know, we had a really nice mic. We spent a lot of time getting a vocal sound for him. We had him in a very neutral room, so there aren't many of those issues to deal with. We can hammer him, and it's not bringing up a, a, a you know a plethora of bad ambience behind him. It's a pretty dead sounding vocal, and that's usually what I go for when I'm recording, you know, a, a pop kind of thing. I use those um, uh, SE Electronics Shield thingies. Uh, to keep more room out of the vocal mic because my philosophy is the the deader you can make that vocal the blacker the the background to that vocal the more in front of the mix you can get that guy or gal um, obviously there's a lot of situations where you don't want to do that when you want it to sound organic and natural and live like the person singing in front like with a band rather than in front of but in this case you want to get that vocal right up on top of everything on top of the mix on top of the world really you know so I have this post behind my monitor here in the studio, and I imagine the singer's head sitting on top of that post. And if he's not up there, or she, then I haven't done my job yet. I need to hear every single word that guy is saying. The diction is very important. It's a big part of producing a record, but you know, if I'm just mixing a song, I don't really have any control over any of that, and I gotta take what I've been given to make it the best that I can. Hey, 